Hello, in this tutorial we're going to learn three methods to create height and depth grayscale representations of our scenes. For this, I created a bunch of spheres. Now I'll take a render of my scene. We can see that our spheres are independent from their distance from the camera. I'll go to my hypershade. I will create new material, let it be a Lambert, and I will assign it to all of my spheres. Then I will go to the attribute editor of my Lambert and I will map the color with a ramp. Here I want to make sure that as projection is selected and I will choose a ramp. Uh, in the projection node I want to make sure that planar is selected and I will go to my ramp. I will delete the middle color which is green by clicking on the small x on the right side. I will change the red color to black and the blue color to white. I will go to my viewport. I can see that a small icon appears here, which is the projection icon. I want to scale it to fit all of my objects. So I will scale it. I will take a render of my scene. Here also the spheres are independent from distance from the camera. The problem is that our ramp is a V ramp, isn't a U ramp. In your case it may be a view ramp, but in mine a U ramp works well. I will take now a render. You can clearly see that our sphere's color depends on the distance from the camera. This method presents many limitations and problems. The first problem is that, for example, if we take all of our scene away from our camera and we take a render, we obtain an unpredictable result. Here, what we would expect to see is that all of our spheres disappear because they are very far away from our camera. This is the first problem. The second problem is that if we take a render from the other side, for example, if we render from here, we can see that the dark sphere is in front and the bright sphere is in the back. This problem can be solved by, for example, parenting this small icon to our camera, but here we run to the risk of having our geometry out of the field of this small projection icon. So what I recommend is not use this method and uh, here I will explain another method to create the same effect but far more accurately. I will go another time to my hypershade. I'll create a new material as well, it will be a Lambert. I will choose all of my spheres, I will send this Lambert to them. Now if I render I have all of my spheres with the same color, independent of the distance from the camera. Now what I will do is I will measure the distance from each sample point to the camera and based on that distance I will affect the color of the object. So to do this I will create a sampler info node from which I can take the coordinates of each sampled point in the camera space with this attribute which is point camera then I will apply the RMS or root mean square to those XYZ coordinates of my point camera. I will calculate the distance and drive a ramp color with this distance. So first of all we have to create a multiply divide node. I will click on my sampler info node then shift click on my multiply divide node go to window connect selected. I'll connect my point camera X to the input 1x, my point camera y, input 1y, my point camera z to input y. Here I will go to my multiply divide node, I will choose power as operation, then I will take those values to the power 2. Now we have to sum up the three squares. I will use plus minus average node. Here <coughs> the problem is that if we Select our multiply divide node, then our plus minus average node, and we go to window connect selected. If we check under input 3D node, we can see nothing. To make those nodes appear under input 3D, we have to go to the multiply divide node, middle click on it and drag it over plus minus average node, then click on input 3D and 0. We will do the same procedure another time. This time we want to click on the input 3D and 1 node. And a third time, this time we want to click on input 3D and node 2. 
Once finished, we delete all the three connections. We click on multiply divide node, then on plus minus average node, and we go another time to window connect selected. Here if we look under MP3D, now our nodes appeared here. So we can use them. We go to the output of the multiply divide node, we choose output X, and we plug it into the input 3D0, input 3D X, the output Y, we plug it into the input 3D1, input 3D X, and the output Z into the input 3D2, input 3D X. Having this connection established, now what we have to do is to take the square root of the sum. To take the square root, we have to create a multiply divide node, another one, and connect those two nodes. We have to connect the output 3D of the plus minus average node, output 3D X to the input 1 X of the multiply divide node. Then, if you go to its attribute editor, we set the operation to power and we set the input to 0 0.5, which means the square root of the input. The output of this multiply divide node now is the distance from the sample point to our camera. This distance may be between 0 and any other number, but the ramp node can be driven but with values between 0 and 1. To solve this problem, we will go to Utilities, we will create a set range node, and we will connect the plus minus average, which gives us the distance between the sample point and the camera, to the set range node. Click on this, shift click on that, window, connect selected. Now we will connect the output x of our multiply divide node to our value x of our set range node. Now if we enter the attribute editor of our set range node, we can see that we have five attributes. The value is our input value. The minimum is the minimum of our desired interval. The maximum is the maximum of our desired interval, which in the case of a ramp will be one. The old minimum will be the minimum of the distance we would have between a point and the camera, which is zero this old maximum will define the distance beyond which the objects become invisible. So, in my case, I will, for example, measure the distance between my perspective camera and my farthest sphere. I will create a measure tool, a distance tool, which is in this case about 56 units. So, if we go to our set range node, I will set my old maximum to 56 